What's up, those boys fans? Uh, do us a big favor. As we always say, we'd be very happy and thankful if you hit the subscribe button, um, liked this video, and uh, gave us the appreciation we are asking for these days. Give it to us. Hit the subscribe button right now. Zachary? What's up, guys and girls and everyone? All, all those people and everybody and them. Um, please uh, hit the subscribe button. We, uh, we're putting in work being here. And, if, and, and you're here watching and we appreciate you. So show us some appreciation, please. And yeah, that's it. That's, that's all it. it. That's that's it. A, it's just an appreciation. Bye. Okay. Bye. We'll see you soon. I feel like you sit so high up. That's because I have the seat up. Yeah, I know. I know. When I sat in your, uh, you don't have your chair up? earlier today, it was, I was like, wow, you're tight, tight in there, dude. Nice and high. I like sitting up like this. I like chilling low. I like to feel my feet on the ground. Well, let's get, let's get to some basics. How do I look? 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 Um, what episode is this, Zach? This is episode 17, dude. Episode 17. Interesting. Yep. And uh we have a heater now and the that we got today on the ground. Yes. That is producing heat that will rise and keep us hopefully a little bit warmer than we've been the last few casts. If you've noticed us shaking, actually I don't think we've shown any shaking. <laughs> But, uh, I, I don't the, think it, I don't think it's coming through on camera, but especially in the last episode. The last, episode were 16, you really cold? Well, I was doing this because oh, yeah. I was trying to keep myself from shaking. Yeah, because I could feel myself kind of do my little like cold. So, touch. are you cold right now? I'm chilly, but I'm not shaking. Chilly. Hmm. I'm actually like because I wanted to not wear a sweatshirt. Um, I am cold right now. Yeah, but I mean, you're gonna warm up. Want to know why? I'm like flexing my abs. Exactly. Like conserving all core body heat as much as possible, um, but it is cold. But we went in and got that heater, so hopefully it helps. We also got a bunch of firewood mm. for my wood burning stove. Do you? You don't have a fire at your house, do you? No. Your condo? No. How do you, do you guys have central heat? It's central heat, maybe, but it's a condo. Heats up quick. Yeah, I remember that when it's I had super a condo. small, super small, tight. Do you know the square footage of your condo? I think it's under a thousand. Under a thousand. I, I think. I think. Like I think apartment it might be nine fifty. I don't know. It's pretty small. It's. It's definitely like no one else could live there. Yeah. It's like me and Alex. That's it. If if we did have a roommate, oh, it's like not I would, it's, would not be a comfortable house. Y'all have done a really good place. A job at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, you walk in and it's a kitchen to the right, and then a living room. You guys did a great job at the layout. Well, it's mainly. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I built it myself man, back in 86. <laughs> like the biggest disc to a renter. <laughs> I really like what you did at the layout of your great, guys' condo. Great layout. Cute layout, man. I like it. Um, and then that. the stairs that go like, like really kind of like squeeze your way up to the next floor. Also, this the super small stairs. Yeah. You used to have those at your condo too. Uh, how many times did you fall down yours? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, have, I have a pretty ra racked up uh, quite a big number on mine. I, I want to rephrase your question for me. <laughs> how many times have you fallen downstairs? No, because no, no. it's not just mine, okay? <laughs> That's been a common theme. And I will say, the condo was the house where I would go down those stairs, not drunk, mm. totally sober, 5.30 in the morning before like, <laughs> yeah, job. <laughs> job at the hospital. It's just like first heels miss. It's just like, uh. <laughs> whole day's ruined. No, just like the first hour. You're like in the car, like your lower back's hurting. <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, dude, when I, when we first moved in there, uh, it was during quarantine. It's like, everyone's locked in their house and no one's working. And so it was like heavy quarantine. We're in there and I would just would get up super early, like six, just to start my day early for quarantine and, uh, slipped on the first step. And that was the first time I fell down, but it was so bad. And I had my water and everything. And it was like, <laughs> like right into the the glass down there and it hurts so bad and all the wind was knocked out of me oh no and so alex is like babe i'm all ah, 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 like you know just like ah, ah, yeah <laughs> terrible uh, terrible terrible way to start your day terrible. Just terrible way to start your day how many i was instantly sad instantly angry <laughs> instantly all the bad things yes it's it's like falling down like missing the first step terrible whether it's a porch whether it's your stairs inside the house, missing the first step, horrible way to start the day. Yeah. 
Also, sliding on ice. I don't have those stories because we don't live in snow, yeah. but you see those videos. Maybe like not having steps. <laughs> yeah. Worst part of the day. I, yeah, ice videos are just like. <laughs> you see them right dude, side, they're like, oh, fuck, fuck. Yeah, it's just always all, hit their head. All. <laughs> yeah. they, dude, old women, old yeah. men. Like, but the worst is like when people fall in real life, it's way more interesting because they go knees. Mm. I always think that like. People, like if you get a, like a ring camera shot or something of somebody like tripping on ice or missing the first step, it's like a, oh, catch, catch the weight. And then the right knee, you know, yeah. like a, the right knee goes into the pavement. And the first one oh, that yeah. comes to my head is just like, oh, that poor patella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, their knee. Because like, instantly in, fractured. In that movies, patella. they're like shoulder in and curve or yeah. like how we learned from our like. Uh, skater friends, right? Was like go limp. Yeah, if you yeah, fall, if you, go if limp. If you go limp, you'll save the most. Uh -huh. Yeah. Whoa! I'm, I'm, I mean, if you like try to brace your fall, you break something. But yeah, most of these people that fall in, like on their ring cameras always go knee first. They're like, uh, uh, uh. oh, oh. Uh, I always just I hurt for them. That's especially the, especially the elderly. That's a total knee soon enough. Yeah. Arthroscopy coming right yeah. up right there. Thank yeah. you for that footage there, yeah. Ring. Let's get an up next. Yeah. Oh, that's another total knee. <laughs> that's like what going through on, you can find fail videos, right? And all that is just like, as a nurse, I'm just thinking like surgery, surgery, so much yeah. money. So much money is being made off of these fails. Or death. Some of these fail army videos now. Well, we're talking about knees. I mean, of course there's like the ones where you're like, yeah. We, oh, he, oh he dead. Oh, they're dead. <laughs> Are we supposed to laugh? Yeah. Are we that desensitized? Well, then, to <laughs> your son, he'll just be <laughs> like <Don't> ah! <laughs> 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 laughing. And it's like, dude, that was a really bad fall. I think that guy's dead. Don't throw, <laughs> don't throw the little, like the generation lower that they're the, like, they're just like, they just don't get to choose anything. Yeah. They just wake up. I was like, Hey, I want, I need you to be distracted. Check out these fail videos. I didn't know it was going to be the most entertainment <laughs> Any kid would ever want. Can we watch more fails? Can we watch fails? Can After people hurt like, themselves? He's watching it. <laughs> but you know, I, it reminded me of stupid videos. Remember stupid videos? Oh my God. Stupid, stupid videos. No, I think it went down. Stupid videos. Right? Or was it stupid videos? No. Stupid videos. I don't know. You're going stupid videos. I think I thought, I thought it was a pitch thing. Stupid videos. But remember stupid videos? We used yes, to go on there and on the little TV was uh, it red? icon. Was it also red? The branding was also red. I don't remember the branding. I just Why remember. I just remember, remember the, that it you was. You don't remember the branding? It was when before. You were kids? It was before still, branding was popular. You don't remember the branding, Zach? It was still Square Video. Nathan, that's what I'm trying to get at. It's how oh. old it is? It was still Square Video. Yeah, there's a name on for a that. Square TV. There is a name for the Square you, TV. All you Two. would do. Two I'm trying TV. to. I'm trying to tell the kids that have never used stupid videos. I know I'm talking. Is you over would you. I'm just sorry. go. Well, you would just go to this website and it would show you stupid videos. You couldn't choose anything. You couldn't search anything. You would just go to it and it would show you videos. And it was always like the uh, America's Funniest Home Videos type of videos where it's someone getting hurt, some kid getting hurt, or someone getting hurt. But it's a funny. You remember video. you're honestly, you're remembering this a lot better than I am because I'm having a hard time even thinking about, like, I remember now that you're saying it, I don't yeah. think I've thought about stupid videos a long time. since you brought it up. Wow. Um, Getting some anxiety. I like this of what we started. Um, one of the things about this cast is we, we, I don't know, like we didn't really have a plan coming into this. We know that last week was really heavy with the topics that we got started on. There was a lot more personal emotion. Even you and I, I don't know how you felt the last cast, but just to um, even before we get into that, um, yeah, we didn't really know what we wanted to talk about. We, every once in a while, as we're starting to develop our story on this cast and what we, how vulnerable we are getting, um, we are starting to feel, I don't know, more you, cause we were just talking about this pretty tired at times with how much work we're putting into this and also being as vulnerable as we are. And so, um, we have an amazing uh, surprise next week yeah. on our Christmas cast. Yeah. Um, and so planning for that and getting ready for that, uh, kind of, it's been a really busy day or a week at work for me. <laughs> totally sidetracked, had no idea what to talk about. Did not want to read the Wikipedia on religious trauma syndrome and didn't necessarily know how to jump into some vulnerable conversation. I don't know, but, mm. um, so that's why we're just shooting the shit here yeah. together. But yeah, how do you feel about that? No, I feel good about that. Uh, I feel like that's what's real right now. It's yeah. just shooting the shit right now. 
Yeah. But yeah. do you feel burnt out? I mean, we were, I know we were talking about that before the cast. Oh yeah. No, Just, t- tough week. Tough week, man. I mean, you made 56 shorts. Oh, I mean, that's, that's not what made it tough. I know, but you made 56 Six. shorts for episode 14. I did. Which um, is <laughs> just a massive amount of short content uh, for all these different social media accounts. And so, well, it's because a lot of them are parts, they're parted out so that we can post them on all platforms. But then it's a lot of work. And then you were. I edited episode 14 and 15 and some vulnerable shit. You got really vulnerable on 14. And I was saying it's got to be weird, you know, editing yourself. Over Watching and over yourself and over. talk about your traumas. I mean, when, I, when I edit the main podcast, I don't even recognize that I'm thinking about myself and being like, wow, my partner tells my fiance tells me all the time that I can do this in our conversations mm. where I sidetrack the conversation. And I'm like, I do that a lot and I can like edit it out. Like if I have an ADHD moment, if Mm -hmm. I wanted, I could just be like, wow, it's like, there's this moment. (laughs) I think I need to work on my listening. And it's like, after a while, it makes you feel a little loony after you edit a long cast and if you're doing all the own, your own editing. And so like long content versus short content is so different. And well, I also think there's a value to being the person editing it. Um, Of course, we don't want to edit our podcast forever. But for the first amount of however long we're going to be able to do it, I think it's really good to, to have to watch yourself talk because it's pretty easy to annoy yourself and yeah. it's already tough enough to watch yourself. But then, like you said, you catch your, like your hiccups and your mistakes and how sometimes we can interrupt people. And it's like, yeah. wait, I didn't even finish that thought. It's like, why do I do that? And you start to kind of work on it and try to finish ideas. And it's like you analyze yourself so much mm-hmm. more. It's almost like we're lucky. Yeah. It's like if you put in the work to edit the cast. Well, it's, it's an experiment. I even think that what we're doing, talking about our trauma and then rewatching it technically and it's hyper analyzing it, editing it, making it look I good. don't even really feel like I'm watching it when I edit it. And then I watch maybe five or 10 minutes of the cast when they're posted, when you actually render them and post them. And I'm like, didn't hear that. You yeah. know, like sometimes <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know I had said that because I'm like so in the zone of yeah. editing it. Um. It's true. Would you, do you agree though? Like sometimes, I don't know. I think we can be different on this, but like, I kind of get off on when we talk about and get off in a academic way or get off like in a podcast <laughs> way. Like I get, like it turns me up and like makes me energetic about what we're doing when we are talking about the harder shit. And I will say, man, that I think that as I'm editing these casts, I am noticing how I am able to kind of ask you questions. And sometimes I like will say things in a way I feel like that open the door for you to be really vulnerable and vocal Mm -hmm. and express your experience or your traumas. And I just really wanted to say, um, of course, thank you because I know that we've agreed to keep doing this, but I'm noticing that I'm as, as, as authentic as I can be. And I'm practicing to be more and more like honest, just myself on this cast with you. But then really recognizing how our own traumas are so much different from each other. Mm. And that uh, for me, like editing the tough stuff, like versus you and I editing a podcast that's fun about pop culture and just joking around Mm. like the Gen Z slang words we do. um, To me, I can kind of have like when I'm editing, I'll have ADHD moments where I kind of get sidetracked and I'm not even listening because I'm like so just kind of lost. Whereas when I'm editing the religious trauma stuff, or if you're saying something really real, mm. I'll like edit it and be like, holy well, and I think, shit, yeah. my brother. I didn't know that, bro. And <laughs> as I'm editing it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm having a moment and it's like triggering sometimes. Yeah. So like, but I like that. I like the intensity. It's almost, it's almost like the content is so real for me and us and so personal that I feel like, oh my God, I'm editing something really like we're saying stuff here that really matters to me. And mm. it's kind of triggering. But uh, isn't that what makes it valuable? Isn't that the reason why but, we're doing this? Why we think we have a voice is because of that? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm just asking, like, does do you, do you like get energized by that? Or does do you think editing con like funny content and no, like no, no brainy content is easier? The funny content's just going to kill me to death. Really? That, that, that's the most I want. Like when I talk about at some point, we're probably going to we'll outsource. It's like, it's for that. Because I love being funny. I love being it. But editing it, it's like, ugh. Yeah. It's like, so it's you're, just, so it's you a struggle. Agree yeah. That it's, it's actually more enjoyable. Like you feel like you have more purpose as an editor when you edit for sure our stuff. That's really vulnerable. Yeah. Even though 
it's tiring, man. It's like, I, I don't know. Like when I'm, when I'm trying it's, to it's sit, emotionally exhausting. Yeah. Like it's like, we're at, Oh my God, I really care about what I'm editing more now. Yeah. But it's so tiring to watch myself say the thing that I'm tired saying. Mm-hmm. And so, um, totally. And so sometimes it's like all of that to say, sometimes we just want to come in here, man, and shoot the shit and have a blast and maybe not talk about, uh, all the like the the hard like truths or the weird shit or the dark things that we have consequences from in our pasts when in reality there's also a lot of joy and humor and fun in our pasts and so just like this cast yeah we want to be able to provide that and I think just for us we need that so that we don't stop <laughs> well and also like talking about your trauma on a weekly basis it's like going to therapy. Yeah. Based, this is basically a therapeutic experiment we're doing with the internet. I am your therapist. <laughs> I'm yours. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> but it's also it's exhausting to do that every week. Yeah. And when we were approaching this data cast, I was like, oh, I, I've been kind of not in the mood to talk about trauma this week. You right. know, it's like I'm dealing with other things this week. I don't want to talk about trauma. And so it kind of like. Well, yeah, you came mm-hmm. over. Yeah, I'm pretty hot at it. And I reacted toughness to it. Had to step out for a little away from you for a little bit. We both just needed a moment. And I just, then we just like brotherly love and hugged it out. And we had our own little, like, what's so funny is that we had the best podcast ever there standing in the garage, just like getting really vulnerable and talking about all of our fears and everything else. And like, then here we are like shooting the shit. (laughs) I think that uh, that's why we're doing this though. So you and I can be that. Like it was Mm -hmm. so I don't know. I felt like we were had a really hard time in the past being that having like our agendas not ruin our relationship or get in the way of our relationship. And yeah. now like you, your well, relationships get more valuable, man. The older you get, yeah. And I mean, ours, ours feels really valuable more and more. The older but think we get, about, think about like like how many of like your best homies that you spent so much time with, maybe even just in your twenties you just barely see anymore. Like you even said it, it's like Megan's your world, dude. Tunnel vision. <laughs> like, yeah. and then you're starting to say like, like your love for me is <laughs> same thing, you know, tunnel vision. I feel the same. It's like, I have very few people in my life and I am so thankful for these people that are my everything in my existence. Like my existence and everything I see and communicate right. with is certain people. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I always want more friends, but I have so many friends. I don't know who to <laughs> hang out with. <laughs> well, that's how it feels. Where like, I just know a lot of people, but like, relationships take a lot of work, you know, Mm -hmm. and like I'm learning how to be more vulnerable in my friendships. I mean, if I'm being honest, like there are some of my closest friends that will hit me up and check in on me. And then immediately when I get a text from them, because we don't see each other anymore, I'll be like guilty that I didn't check on them first. I know. I feel the same. And I'm like, you know, we got to start figuring, you know, Ethan's got to figure some more things. Yeah. Got a lot more to figure out. And I so, almost, I almost feel like sometimes the guilt I have for not hanging out with past friends keeps me from hanging out with them now. You think so? I don't know. Right. I mean, I don't know how that would work out psychologically, but Just that's the that, way it feels. What, what you said was guilt keeps you from doing the thing maybe you wanted to do. I don't know. Just like someone keeps hitting you up to hang out. And you always are either busy, but most like I'm normally not like just trying to avoid friends, but I'll always be busy. But there's also like this, the longer that's gone on, it's like just, this yeah. guilt attached to it. I so think, I start to feel guilty where it's like, oh, is it me? Because they're hitting me up to hang out. But is it me that's like, like now attaching it to like this whole, I'm too guilt. I haven't been there for them almost in a way like this guilt yeah, thing. I, think I, it, I feel that. That's like yeah. what I was saying is I think like you're trying, you're saying the same thing in yeah. a little bit of a different way. But I, uh, I think it's just like, it's hard to be honest. It's hard mm-hmm. to be like vulnerable. It's, it just is. Unless you just do it and then you're like, that was easy. <laughs> it's like every time you're just like, hey, right now I'm feeling uncomfortable because I haven't hit you up and you're hitting me up. I feel bad. And it's like, first off, that looks pretty weak and sounds weak. But if you're just honest about it and that friend's like, if they love you and they're like, whoa, I called you because I missed you not to hear you, bitch. You know, it's mm-hmm. like that friend's like, they literally care about you enough to call you. That's a big deal. Doesn't mean you have to, you just need to receive that love. Yeah. That yeah, I think I need practice on that on a regular basis. But it, but there's um, also something much getting older, dude. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to really realize what it means to get older now. I not getting old, getting older. Because being yeah. 20 the, is so much different than being 30. Like maturing. Yeah, and maturing in a way of I'm part of society. I'm I'm 
I have a, pretty much like a yearly routine. I'm part of everything. I have certain friends that have stayed around, certain ones that haven't. But in reality, the, even the ones that have stayed around, I don't see that much or talk to. Mm. Everyone's always told me getting older is losing your best friends and like falling in love. But mm -hmm. you, you, you're never going to keep your best friends. As everyone yeah. always said, you're never going to really have your best friends. Do you believe them? No, I think I'm always going to have homies, but I don't hang out with them ever. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I like, like hung out with my friends, which is like, okay. It's just, it's a lot to process getting older that like you don't really hang out with your friends as much. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And I, and I know that there's, you know, gender is real, but not real, right? It's real and it's consequences, but not real and it's reality that it's constructed. And so these things are different though. Like guys, I think have a harder time reconnecting sometimes. And that's a big statement. That's an opinion. Um, but like just watching Megan and like watching Alex and just like watching girls, like, um, and I'm not going to be, I don't want to be ignorant in that. I do feel like I talking with Megan a lot, like understanding and just learning through her and how, you know, sometimes I, I will hit up a guy. I, I've, I, I've been putting in more work to hit up old friends and reconnect. And I think like, as I feel social anxiety in my life as a person that like keeps me from going out to a work party sometimes, or keeps me from going out when a friend hits me up, like I have social anxiety. Am I, that means like maybe other people have social anxiety too. So that's two people having a harder time with social anxiety meeting up or like pushing through that. And so personally, I don't know if that's with everybody else, but for me, I actually have quite a lot of social anxiety that I've learned how I coped with in the past. So like not drinking now, I've started to really learn what it feels like to have like social anxieties and not that buffer or that like lubricant. Yeah. And so. Which is um, quite a lubricant, dude. It is quite the lubricant. And so now I use, I mean, I'm like a cannabis head and, I, and like, what's funny is that cannabis can cause more anxiety in these situations. Oh, for sure. So then I just, it feels like for me, I'm such a weirdo where I'm just like going on an adventure. All right, let's go to the drag Christmas show. <laughs> Speaking of the devil. Um, we went to this drag Christmas show and with I had our the, ladies. And I, and I had one of my homemade edibles a cookie that's so freaking strong. It's mm -hmm. psychedelic. It's spiritual. And that you was were, the first he was, time. He was pretty, he was tripping That was hard. the first time in so long that I walked into those doors. Mind you. Okay. Let's actually rephrase just before we get into it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. We went to uh, here in town, which we're not going to tell you so that you can't find us and hurt us. Uh, there was a drag Christmas, drag show Christmas that is a touring um, event or yeah. Like, yeah, shindig. And it was absolutely out of this world. Phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> <It was> phenomenal. <laughs> so amazing. So amazing. It was a bunch so of my coworkers. Co co you and Alex went. Yeah. Uh, Megan came with me. And um, yeah, that was one of those events where you get invited and you say yes and you go. And I've been to a lot of drag. Have you been to a drag show before? Oh, dude, I lived in New Orleans. Oh, that's my right. friend. Yeah, you lived in New Orleans. <laughs> but I mean, like, so did you, have you ever seen a drag show like that? I haven't seen that much of a production with drag. The drag I've seen is like trash drag in the streets of New Orleans. I you mean, know? I, would you call it trash drag? That's kind of, a, that's aggressive. Okay, I trash drag come compared to what we saw that right night. we yes. saw like a Cirque du Soleil like performance yeah, yeah. I almost I don't, I, I, we're, we're supposed yeah. to be a little more careful where we're located but yeah. it's like down home yeah you know wine country yeah and uh the same like major acts come through here right like big names and then all of a sudden there's the drag a drag Christmas sold out yeah right Which was, I was so I was so amazed it's pretty, sold pretty out. sure it was sold out and uh so it was just packed house um Fun. And Everyone's so fun to, and so much love and just yeah. like such great but, performers. So we're showing up and you guys are already, you and Alex are already there. And me and Megan are walking up to the, the venue and you can see people. It's so cold out for us. You know, it's like 30 degrees here in California. We're like freaking, <laughs> like walking to the venue. And um, I'm hearing like a dun, 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 dun. And I'm like, what the, it's like, it's like a drum sound. So me and Megan keep walking. I'm so cold that I can't even think. I'm threatened by how cold it is. And I'm like, Megan's freezing too. So we see you and mm. Alex and you're all chest pumped and you're looking and I look and I'm like, oh, it's Proud Boys protesting yeah. in front of the venue with like a snare drum. 
Yeah, there was there's standing only like with seven signs, or eight of them. like seven or eight of them. There's this big person going dun 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 dun, and I was like, proud proud boys, <laughs> proud boys, and you're all like. What the fuck are they doing in our town, Nate? That's what I said. <laughs> you, had, you had such a Zach moment. I loved it. I was I so couldn't cold. not, dude. I w- it, it infuriated me at first. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. And then I was like, oh, this Just makes sad. me so sad. sad. What are you doing in my town? And then I started to think about it. I'm like, I don't think this is my town. I think you're traveling with these people and you're harassing they're, them. They're like, a, yeah, they're like a, they're like a traveling. traveling proud boy. Pieces of trash, but whatever. Whether, I mean, I would imagine everyone has their own opinions. It's just, it broke my heart, man, to see it out there. Yeah. I mean, my vision was like coming in, my, my experience, right? I'm like walking in, freezing, so cold that I, did, I didn't have any reaction, which I think just like, it was just more of like, <laughs> oh, that makes so sense that it's like we're at our drag Christmas show here in our town and there's the Proud Boy standing and you're just like, can you, can you believe, can, can you believe this, Nathan? Can you believe this? Proud Boys in our town. <laughs> and I was like, we got to get inside. It's cold. Yeah, because you're high as, you're stupid. That you were cook, high as a kite. That's when the anxiety kicked in. Yeah. Because that cookie was imagine. like, it was like my heart like literally went. Dum, dum. <laughs> Zach's angry. Zach's angry. Do not get into Zach. I do not want to. Can't fight the Proud Boys. Can't fight the Proud Boys. Can't fight the Proud Boys. No, it wasn't fight. But then I, uh, yeah, no, we I was like, Defend. I, I don't believe this is probably well, at first I couldn't see their sign because their sign was written with like a, a poorly written like a wet crayon it said something like do not raise your children yeah something in the blah 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 and I was like do not raise your children in the it's cold man <laughs> it's so cold man well so at first I walked up a little bit closer to see their signs because they were they were like there's a roundabout and they were over here and we were here at the entrance and so I walked up to like the center of the roundabout to see just from afar with their sign says, said it was Proud Boys. And I was just so blown away that of course I'm like, I'm just going to get some footage Did of this. You got footage, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't want to show because I don't, I don't want we to don't wanna, support yeah. them. We don't want to support them. If we put them on our platform, we're basically giving them coverage. Yeah, I don't know. And Fuck maybe that. If you're actually, uh, you care, maybe put in the <coughs> comments what you think. If you want to see the footage, um, we ain't going to show it. <laughs> <laughs> but we got it. <laughs> oh, Got the black lung pop, black lung. Um, anyway, so that aside, uh, yeah. But then once once we get inside, I was front and center. I was like fifth yeah. row, dead center. I was back right. Yeah, far back right, which was still pretty good. I no, mean, it was, it was great. But once I saw your seats, I'm like, oh baby, you got a show tonight. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, I had my uh, uh, party shirt, like button up, my Neil man. Button up shirt, looking all hot. Megan was looking all hot. You and Alex were looking all hot. The moment we walked in those doors, it was just like Alex was looking hi, real hot. Hi. Oh, you guys look so good. I love your shirt. I love you. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Was going, it was oh, a nice lot. shirt. Nice shirt. Hey, hey. Oh, hey, looking good stuff. It was just like so much love and appreciation. Yeah. I was just like, oh, those poor proud boys are freezing. Yeah. <laughs> it's warm and cozy in here. This is great. And like there was so much love the whole show. It was uh, it was a lot though at first because I was really high and that it was so funny because I had a moment where I was like, nah, you know, this is probably the one event you want to just ease into it. You don't want to just eat yeah, the whole dude, cookie. I didn't. I didn't. Don't eat the whole cookie. Yeah, <laughs> that was a yeah, big choice, dude. Especially that. It's like the whole beginning of the show. I was like, <laughs> no, I've been, did, I've been you, to New Orleans drag quite a few times. No, no, but you, uh, dude, you're too high is really funny because it makes me still feel good about when I get too high because there's so many times where I get I get too high and I'm like ah see I can still push my limits and I <laughs> I get really anxious and I hate it and I'm like I can't wait till I'm not high anymore it doesn't last as long so it's like about an hour and I'm chilling but when you're too high it's the same thing I'm like oh I'm so sorry Nate it's all I feel I'm like mm, you just gonna have to ride this one out yep that's true. Um, and you do have, you did take footage of the show. Yeah. And we, uh, we got to promote this. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Go and see it. It's, a, it's just uh, uh, good stuff. Um, what's funny about that day, though, that we went to the show. Uh, I mean, can I give a little recap here? Sure. I've had a very busy week at work uh, in the hospital. And we're talking like, oh, Thanksgiving happens. And like clockwork, pandemic or not, the uh, the holidays bring out a lot of toughness in people and sadness mm-hmm. and depression, missing family members and what have you. 
And so uh, ER visits go through the roof, bed counts go up, like you're out of beds before you know it, surgeries are delayed, you have to cancel the things and uh, the ER has just been blown up. There were, and I'm going to say it, there were 75 people in our ER this week, Mm. 60 to like 50 to 70 people on and off, up and down, not able to get beds. Is that a lot? Without having beds in the hospital. So they need beds, but they can't get beds. 50 to 70 people. 50 like, to 70 people on top of everything else? Like the whole hospital's full. There's not a yeah. single bed open. We're doing all of our surgeries. And then there's like 50 people, 30 people in the waiting room, 25 people in the ER with beds, mm. needing beds in the hospital. Wow. Sounds and like a so lot. every holidays, it's like that, where the numbers just go through the roof. I don't want to get into the logistics of hospital life, but there are like the whole, that whole holiday thing. What I'm trying to get to was on Friday, the end of the week, after a five day long work week, which we all work these long work mm-hmm. weeks. Um, one of the days that week, this last week, I got a lunch break, which was nice that day. And uh, so Friday comes around and it's about 9 a.m. Uh, and we have a very busy cardiac heart surgery schedule, very busy orthopedic surgery schedule, endoscopies, colonoscopies, you name it. Mm. Uh, woman surgeries, gynae, blah, blah, blah. A lot. About 9 a.m., the entire charting system, uh, the Program. cloud internet system just crash. Do, 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 do. So, like, whenever there's an outage, uh, we call it a code lime. And it's always overhead. Code lime. This is a code lime because it's like we've lost access to everything. It's the closest. It's the closest form of like an apocalyptic event. Mm. Like if there were studies of what happened in, hosp- in hospitals and there's power outages that like where you're not powered, but like the cloud, your charting systems go down yeah. where you lose complete communication from surgery to the kitchen to yeah. lab to pharmacy. So that's what happened. Normally that whenever that has happened, it's normally like on night shift or it takes like two minutes and boots back up. Mm. And so it's like 9 a.m. I have a person in heart, like in heart surgery and uh, another person getting this kidney surgery done. And my good old friend uh, in the hospital, she uh, calls me from surgery and the whole training system goes down and like each nurse, like you can hear it. Hey, can you guys, can you guys get on? What's, what's going on? Um, we just lost my charting. Uh, people start figuring out and then bing, 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 bing. Oh, see you. This is Nathan. How can I help you? Hey, Nathan, it's Lizzie. Um, did you guys' charting system go down? Yeah, I, th- I think it is. I- yeah, we lost the charting system here, which is like unheard of. So it's like, oh, wait, you're in surgery though. Oh, shit. And it was like immediately I was like, oh my God, we lost all form of communication on every level. And so they were like, oh, this is the real deal. So what happens when you lose all of your digital charting, you have to go back to paper charting. Yeah. So it's like taking out old cabinets, <laughs> the dust comes <laughs> off. Okay. Open up. Like we had like 18 binders open, all these nurses running through the hospitals, no. surgeons coming out of surgery, like old guys that have like done written orders since like, you know, like the seventies. So they're just like at the station, like knowing how to do this, like, you know, <laughs> like newer doctors. So then this cardiac uh, surgeon that I love comes up to me. He's just an amazing doctor. And he's like, all right, here's the deal, Nathan. Like right after his case, they're like bringing back that surgery. And he's like coming to me and he goes, all right, man. So here's the deal. Uh, I, I uh, never written orders before in my career because he's younger. And I was like, what? And he was like, I've never done written orders. What do I, what do I do? I was like, <laughs> no, no, man, <laughs> you can't do that. And he was like, what do you want? And you just want me, can you tell? And I was like, Oh my God. It was like one of those moments where like just shit hit the fan. Mm. And it was about, I think it was about three hours long that we lost all of our chart. No, two, two and a half hours. And so I was like posted notes and papers at every single patient, like station. We're talking like people with like bleeding wounds coming back to me. And I'm like looking at the clock, like, okay, it's fine. Blood pressure. It's right. The blood pressure. I'm writing all this shit down. Like every 15 minutes, like, Oh man. And it was like, talk about like, if there's like zero to 10 stress, we're at like maybe 11. (laughs) If that's possible. Everybody you're like, Hey, how are you doing? We're back. Come on. What do you need? Can I do not? I'll do an IV for you. We're good. It's like people are just like deer in the headlights. Everyone's just like, ah. Moment the charging system comes back on. Like it's just like one computer turns on. Someone's like, I'm back. I'm back. We're back. We're back. 
<laughs> we're back! We're back! It was just like, everyone's like, we're back! Damn. Oh Sounds my. so intense. It was so intense. And it was such a bummer. And it was so much stress. Yeah, fuck that, dude. Oh, so bad. Everybody, like normally when people in the hospital have a tough day, they're like, been a tough day. Can't wait to get home and have a beer or something. <laughs> this time it was like, that was miserable. <laughs> And everyone's like, yeah, I, that was really bad. I never want that to happen again. And we're like, we need to be trained. <laughs> we will, we will take more classes to be trained on how to do this because yeah. it was just like really, really uncomfortable. And all, all of my coworkers that work on the same unit, we're all going to the same drag Christmas show that yeah. night. And so I get off, have about a couple hours to clean up. Oh, that's why you guys were all little like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Some Makes people, sense some now. Pe- some people got litty titties that night. And I was, that's why I got home and I ate a whole cookie. And Megan's like, what? And I'm like, I just don't want to be here. What, you ate a whole cookie? Yeah. Oh, I think you ate a half. She told me you ate a half cookie. Well, I mean, I it was basically all of it because it was like a bite of, t- of it taken out oh, earlier. Gotcha. But it was like, God, dude, I that's was coping. so much. I was that's like, such a huge still, amount. If I still drank, it would be like, <laughs> take the whiskey. Yeah. yeah. So it's my form of like, it's like a stoner's version. Yeah. It's like, it totally is a storm. I will wait one hour. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but I have, I have been um, dabbling in a little bit of edible, uh, like the liquid stuff you put on your tongue. Mm. Alex, Alex has a nice sublingual. concentrate. Oh yeah. The sublingual. Say it with me. Gland. Sublingual. Sublingual gland. Sublingual. Sublingual. Gland. Spell it. S-U-B sub ling L-I-N-G U-A-L. Sublingual. Okay, U-A-L. U-A-L, yeah. I think that's right. I mean, I mean, I did take anatomy. I did have to spell it. You know what? I'm not even going to check it. Congratulations. Thanks. Probably didn't spell it right. You won. Um, that was one of the biggest things I got dinged on, ding dong, dinged on in anatomy was I couldn't fucking spell anything. And, or pronounce. Or pronounce. I had the funny, I still had the funniest ways of saying things so I could spell it right. Right. Because if you say it the way it's, sat, it's spelled, you'll all spell it right. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, spelling is that's, I mean, I just. And I wish just... I could think of like the the certain things I get wrong and I'd be like, no, I pronounce it this way. And it, people would even laugh at me in class because I, I didn't change the way I pronounce things. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Mm. I know how to do this. Mm. And the only way I'm going to pass is if I pronounce it this way, I know where it is. Hey, we all got to succeed, man. <laughs> you got to figure out your way to get through it. College exactly. is one of those things where you're like, no one's going to save you. Yeah. Okay. Then I see too mad to fun. I think there is I some, be mm, as you were saying, you, cause you've always said this when the holiday season kicks in, you're always like, man, it's a sad day out there. Or it's like, it's a, holidays are sad times, sad times, Zach. Yeah. And it's because you get to see the hospital side of holidays. It's because I'm my card. Yeah, I got to work, in, I work as a nurse. Yeah. And what's interesting is from where I work, I get to see the the sadness of the wealth. It's the most <laughs> wonderful time of... Welcome to... I was about to say where you work. Yeah, almost. <laughs> um, I'm going to call it something else. It's like you work at a place called Courage. No, I work at Johnny Garlic's. We'll call it... We'll call it... <laughs> we'll call it Courage. Welcome to Courage here in the Christmas <laughs> season. I'm like... There's 75 people in the ER. We just had our charter system go out Merry yeah. Christmas. But I mean, there's something about... <laughs> but you hate your job. I hate my job. Well, do you hate it though? I hate it. it it's, I, I really, I, especially now, I really hate it. It's, it's like big, every it, week gets harder. Once again, let's maybe talk about this because I don't hate my job and it's I, mm. that's so interesting. So. Yeah. Um, hate such a strong word. And here on those boys, we're not a big fan of the H word. No, but I do hate my job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but uh, what are the holidays like at your job? Uh, they're just different. Different wealth comes in. Do you, do you have homeless coming in on a regular basis? On oh, such a, a regular basis. Maybe, maybe just a shot. Maybe. Can I get a, a shot? sandwich. I'm so sorry. It's $19. Yeah, $19. And you have $2. Yeah, and it's an eight-year-old. Out. You don't even have an ID. <laughs> you don't even have an ID. So where am I? What day is it? You just like you. No, just but it brings. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm saying it brings the crazies in because I had this woman come to my bar that was maybe one oh, of the craziest humans. Are we about to get another bar humans. story? Are we about to get another bar story? I mean, it's not going to be as in depth as any of my other bar stories. It's very maybe short better. story. Give it to me, uh, dude. She was insane, insane to the point of she like like my server. In the lobby there, I'm at the lobby bar, and then I have one server with me all night. So we'll do dinner, we'll do everything. 
who run the whole lobby. And my server, who is my best server there, and she's like an older Russian woman, she she dipped. She left me there. She's like, oh, that woman's fucking nuts. I'm not staying. Oh, wow. She just left. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I was just, she, but she just sat at my hanging. bar. Nine times out of 10, she'll sit on a table. I didn't know she was the crazy woman. They always knew she was crazy. And this poor woman, man, <laughs> like she wasn't crazy. And I was trying to tell this to my server. I'm like, she's not crazy. She's lost. Cause she was so confused and so lost. And she was, she believed everything her phone told her. Wait, hold on a minute. So she was a normal a customer. Very. So no, no, I work where I work. She drunk. Yeah. I got her drunk where I work, (laughs) (laughs) where I work, legal bartender, (laughs) legal bartender. It's a dangerous world out there. Legal, legal bartender where I work. You don't go there and eat food and drink alcohol unless you don't care at how expensive the alcohol or food should Mm, be. Everything is overpriced beyond Disneyland. So it's just like no Disney's a lot more expensive now. Oh, you be had, careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Disney's you had, very expensive. You now. had three drinks, so she had three drinks. Those three drinks alone were eighty bucks. Mm, right, that's a lot. It's a lot of money for three drinks, dude. That's a lot. Wow, three like, drinks. A homeless person comes into my job and they're like, "Do you have a blanket?" Yeah, but then she also got food, so her bill was very high. But she's very rich. That's why she was there. Sure, diamond ring was legit, like as big as mine. No, dude, like out. No lie. The biggest rocks you've ever seen. It's like, oh, gross. Big diamonds yeah, you got there. Yeah, that's going to get caught on yeah, something. Huge diamonds. And, and so- She like picks food out of her and teeth she was with just, it. She was incredibly invasive. <laughs> so she, if you weren't listening to her, she was mad at you. And she, and, and she Ooh, all she would talk oh, about is conspiracy. So she needy. first sits down and she's like talking to my other bartender because I just got back from lunch. And I was like, oh, fuck. Someone sat at my bar. No one ever sits at my bar. But that means I have to engage which you'd only understand if you knew where I worked, that it's really hard to engage people at my bar. And that's why we're remodeling the bar in January. And it's be this dope new mm. actual bar. But right you, now. Wait, hold on. Cause you've told me that you're like center stage, right? Yeah. You're like in the middle of the restaurant. So everyone. No can- restaurant. I'm in the middle of the hotel lobby. <laughs> so you, so you walk in and it's like, Hey Zach. Yeah. Zach. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's why I'm saying you got to come visit me. You got to see what my life is and you got to, you'll be like, I now, get why you hate it. The only reason why I haven't visited you is because it's expensive and I want like, <laughs> plus I don't drink anymore. So it's like, if I come to the bar now, it's like, I actually feel more comfortable visiting yeah. you because I just come and get a soda water or something and say hi. Oh no, we have really good non-alcoholic beverages. I can make you with non-alcohol. Of course you do. We You're have, in the we center have, lobby. We have non-alcohol You're spirits. You're in the center of the lobby. Why wouldn't you have beautiful non-alcoholic beverages for Nene? <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Yeah. Uh, but so she first sits down and, uh, or uh, he leaves and I, I revive, relieve him of his service. He goes home and she's with me. And normally people don't stay for that long, but she stayed for like two and a half hours. But the first thing she says, and I, I have a pretty good way of not showing anyone, anyone attention, still getting them what they want having like this side look so that it's, you know, I'm here if you need anything, but don't you think we're talking? You know, I have this persona and people even say, it's like, you have a really good way of making people know they don't want, you don't want to talk. It's like, thanks, but it's not mean. It's yeah. It's like, it's I'm those here, Calabrese I'm, eyebrows. I'm here to do work. It's those what Calabrese else do you think brows, I'm here? Man, yeah. Italian brows. But so I'm like looking for something in the fridge and she, first thing she says to me, and I haven't had an interaction with her yet. Her first interaction is boy, you, what, what she is, called you, wait, she called you boy? Boy. No, no, she didn't. She didn't. I'm Come not, on. I'm not gonna put it on her. Oh. I'm not gonna put it on her. I'm not gonna put it on her. I thought she did. I thought she did. Boy. No, she said, excuse boy. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Like that. Excuse me, sir. It's not too bad. Can I ask you, it's kind of a personal question. I hate these personal questions. Can I ask you a personal question? Just like that. And I was like, of course you can. She goes, how old are you? And I'm like, well, 30 years old. She goes, oh, you're my son's age. Did you get the shot? <laughs> And I'm like, oh, so I, I kind of lean in, <gasps> what is, what a question. lean over the bar For so I could see December her. December 2022. Did and you I'm get like, the shot? No, I know. And I'm like, I'm like, what, what, one of these shots, which shots yeah, are which, we talking about? Which one? And she goes, oh, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the shot, she just did, like that. She did that. <laughs> she and, did that. And I was like, so you talk about the vaccine. She goes, yes. I mean, if you're going to use the word just like that, like she's already heated and she's ready to go, dude. And uh, I'm like, oh, well, of course I got the shot. It's like, why wouldn't I get you the shot? You mean the vaccine? And then yeah. she, she goes, she goes, you got both of them? I'm like, yeah, I'm vaccinated. She goes, oh, were you forced to because you work here? I'm like, nope, all choice. Just like that. Like, nope, 100% my choice. So interesting. And then she says this, and this is just going to give you exactly who I'm talking to here. She goes, don't have kids. I'm trying to convince my son not to have kids now because he got it too. Ooh. She's, and she's we don't need any more incels she in this nation. She sounds stable. So then she starts going off and she's like, 
this might lead into another conversation, but she was like, you know, the crazy thing is Kanye's right. Blah, 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 blah. Starts going off on this. Oh, and then she's like, you think, you think Trump's wrong? Trump's right. He went off on this. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, she's just fringe. Yeah. She's hashtag <laughs> fringed out. But dude, she went on. Fringed out. And I, I at some point, I just disassociated because I couldn't really hear her. But she, <laughs> just, I had to, man, because it started to get so weird. She started to show me documents of how I could sell my body to the black market and have and feed 40 people if I wanted to go out that way. <gasps> and she's like, isn't this disgusting, Zach? Look. And she's showing me the, like pictures on Facebook. I'm like, that's not proof of fucking shit what for was, one. I'm confused. She would show me like a TikTok video and be like, see, Kanye's right. Oh. And then she would go off on this rant. You can't believe this nonsense that yeah. you think you believe in. Blah, I mean, blah, blah, Kanye, blah, blah. Kanye is right winged. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> there he you is, go. He, nice Kanye, little swing. Kanye is definitely right winged. Yeah. That's but for lo- sure. Long story short, um, we're very respectful men when we're in professional settings, I believe. Sure we are. Yes, we are. We treat people with a lot of respect when I'm yes. being professional. Unless they ask me to do something special, then I will give my patients a little, you know. We're good. Yeah. Just but, kidding. Um, joke. So I gave her- <laughs> Joke. I gave her fantastic service, right? And I listened to her. And uh, I think she scares off a lot of people and they don't listen to her. And I am not, I'm, when I'm working, I never state opinions. I just listen. That's because you're like, you can't really state opinions, I can't, right? especially it's there. Like, I can't. And, but I'm not supposed to. to. But there's employees that they get ticked off and they state their opinions oh, and no. they get in trouble. I went to the Christmas party with Megan and I've met some people that yeah, were yeah. a lot different approach than you. Yeah, yeah. Very, very different sure. approach. Lovely people though. I love them all. Very smart. Yes. Very, very good at their words. Yes. Like, you told that one off in a very aggressive yeah. Brilliant way. Yeah. They do it. They do it well. But um, I just listened to her the whole time. And when she left, uh, she paid with her card. And I think she was a little drunk because she left me a little too much cash. Oh, yeah. Because she was like, she was like, that's for you. That's lubrication. She's in like, a that, good one's, way. that one's for you. And she's pointing to a hundred dollar bill. I'm like, oh, I'm like, thank you so much. She goes, no one ever listens to me. Thank you for listening to me. And I was like, oh, no, of course. It's my job. My oh, job wow. here to listen to you. But then she paid in cash. So she covered her bill in cash, tipped me a hundred bucks, but forgot she covered her bill with her credit card. So I was like, oh, thanks for the $220 tip. Oh! Oh, you came <laughs> up. You listened to a crazy, the shot woman. Yeah. And you got 250 bucks out of it. Don't have kids. So moral of the story here, folks, <laughs> is if you listen to people, you too will make $250 in cash. Listen to the fringed out and you but, too will make cash. But dude, I think it's, it it really showed me an interesting change in what this like TikTok short form content media is going to be doing to yeah. People like this that are vulnerable because she wasn't crazy. And I talked to her for a long time and her beliefs have now ruined her family. She's not allowed to see her grandkids anymore. Mm. Like she's just oh, starting God. to talk to her son again. She's it's like, like she, really sad. She's like, yeah, she, but she, she's so wealthy and she had yeah. a home in Hawaii. She has a home here. She's talking about how she had to fly here and she's so pissed off because the internet went out and she has to restart her video cameras here so she can watch her dogs from Hawaii. And it's like, okay, hey, your problems are different than mine. Yeah. You have different issues. Yeah. And she's wearing this huge ring and she's so rich and she, she has a lot yeah. of stress, obviously in her life that she's created and fabricated but these conspiracies that she's spewing on to me that are just ridiculous are all because she's believing everything she's seeing and it's really if you're not good at deciphering through the content that's being thrown at you on these media platforms and you don't do any of your own research you're going to believe some of the craziest like stories and conspiracies that's interesting i think yeah and i agree with that do you think that to like kind of ask on a question like something with that is If someone's in an emotionally tough place, let's say they're going through a divorce or a death in the family, people are more vulnerable. Do you think people in more vulnerable situations in life and in more painful situations in life can become more like seduced to conspiracy theories and odd things? 100%. So like even, even like really, really smart people can become victim to bizarre conspiracies if they're in a hurting painful place in life. Correct? Kind of like Kanye West. This is the section of the podcast that you're going to hear a large beep. Beep! No. Uh, we don't actually need to get into it unless you want to get into the yay. And I don't know. I think, I think he's gone. When he first made his statement, we had, I think we already had some comments on it. Maybe way back. We talked about Kanye a lot. I will. Can I share something just to uh, take this is, Instead of just talking about the same shit everybody else talks about, the Kanye and he praises us, blah, blah, blah. Like the, it's all the same. We we all we're seeing all of it. Yeah. 
And obviously Kanye, you know, KK Kanye and Kanye is right winged. And it's for me as a childhood fan of Kanye, I had a moment this week where I really like realized my experience with how like it made me feel with what's going on with Kanye is 24 came on. Um, I know. I love that song. Dear Lord, baby, all, all right. right. All that. Um, and it started to play, and immediately I was like, Yes, because I love that song. Mm. And I was like, and Mago's in the car, and I was like, Yes, uh, oh, and just like all on my own. And I was like, Oh, and I totally like got really emotional and like teared up because I was like, just didn't even think. I was like, I can't listen to it. I know it was the first time that that, that song came on. Weird, and I was like, Oh no, I can't listen to it now. And even now when I'm thinking about it, it's like such a good song and it's mm. coming from him. And it's such a good song about like, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be. It's like, dude, it's not all right anymore. Kanye, we but it's are not, done. Like I've I think, been done, but like now I'm like really, I got like hurt yeah, by it. I think it's a great definition on what. As a fan canceling yourself looks like Ugh. look at um canceling yourself looks like well said that's what it look that's what it feels like it feels like i have no control even when i try to hold on like megan was like maybe someday you'll be like like someday soon you'll be able to listen to all like see kanye before he went full right wing like maybe you'll be able to see him in his past as that artist you loved and not everything that he's now like mm. separate him. People are more than one thing. And it's like, it's hard because he's actively in the moment hurting my feelings. Mm. Right. Like that's, that's the personal thing I have with him now is it's like, dude, you, I love your music. I love it so much that I was still able to listen to it even through all this shit. And now I just immediately turned, like turned the song into the next one, had a moment. And Megan was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm actually like bummed. I can't, we can't listen to that song. And she was like, I'm sorry, babe. And I was like, I feel uncomfortable that you're apologizing that I can't listen to Kanye. And she was like, no. Does I'm... she do the same thing with her music or does she doesn't, does she doesn't care? No, she totally cares. Yeah. Oh, no, dude. She's like the, like we had a whole conversation about Kevin Spacey. Yeah. But a conversation about like, Hey, how do you feel about listening to people's art? That's like done What's horrible the one? things. So I can't, I can't think of his name, but he did. He's like he just recently got canceled, but he was like uh, taking advantage of girls in the studio. What's his name? You mean he from did... like a news station? No, no, no. He was a big singer. It's like hip hop, R&B singer. Oh, you mean R. Kelly? R. Kelly. I was in the bathroom and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> and I was in the class and I was like, oh, yeah. Is that R. Kelly? That's R. Kelly. I was in the bathroom and I was like, But oh, I'm yeah. similar, similar vibe where it's when one of his bangers comes on. No, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, that one's obvious. I'm sorry. I don't want to say that. Like it's obvious. Like it, that one, like, but now it's even me just pretending but listen to, to Listen like to what him. you just said. Now it's starting to be, that's obvious with Kanye. Because I was listening to that same song the other day. It came up when I was driving and I was like, I just, I really wanted but, to hear the song. It, but the difference but is like it. R. Kelly was a dis disgusting pig who like took advantage of young girls and like had homes for them. And um, we don't have yeah, to get into no, that. He's but, disgusting. But Kanye is deliberately, he's become a Nazi. Yeah. I don't even know how that happens. I wish I could speak more on how that happens, but I think that what we were just talking about is how shit happens. The whole history of Chicago. I don't know enough about this to get into this, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think that that's why I wanted to share my current situation about the Kanye thing is that when I've listened to 24, I got a little teary eyed and turned the song fucking sucks, bro. Yeah. But like I started to do a little more research into the history of Chicago and the neo-Nazis and how they would go down the streets and the Jewish neighborhoods and with like Hal Hitler and like then all these laws were like a law was passed to, I don't know. I just haven't looked into it too much, but I just know that Chicago has quite the history. And then it's like most places have quite the history. There's just like such a racist history everywhere and white supremacy like neo-Nazism is uh, a fringe real shit that World War II and all of that. Like, it's just so real that what Kanye is doing is causing real pain and suffering on the Jewish community. And anytime anybody of fame, any anybody of power with their voice that gets shared like this mm. um, comes out and has fallen victim 
whatever you want to call it, and becomes the enemy and becomes the opposite side of support. Everything's going to be all right. You know, love through art, all of these things and becomes the source of hate and the source of corruption and the source of all of this shit. Like it's very real and it causes a lot more hate. And so there's just a lot more like, um, uh, like Jewish graves being spray painted on, uh, vandalism and, you know, like sites being like the vandalism sites showing, you know, Kanye is Kanye's right. Like what that lady said Mm -hmm. in your bar, that's the rippling effect is what you have is all of these fringe groups and all of these sectors that have just like people just like hurt and in pain with no families and no friends. And then they find their chosen family, which are these fringe organizations and however that tumbling happens. And then you have this power these powerful voices. And like, so you have like, you know, uh, info wars with Alex Jones, you know, who has Kanye on because Alex Jones has been canceled so many times that then that Kanye, it's like they're creating their own little cancel culture, powerful yeah. network. You guys should make a podcast. They all have <laughs> podcasts. They should make their own called canceled. They all have, dude, they all have very powerful podcasts. It's a great idea. Voices. If they do it now. I don't think that there's, I think that's towards me. I think that it's hard to be canceled. I think it's hard to cancel certain people. But I think that's those a, people have big that, voices that's, that that's are pretty a new, evil. That's a new thing. It's getting hard to get canceled. Because, well, it's getting hard to get canceled if you're Kanye. But look at what Elon Musk is doing as well. Also, did you? Did I you, don't even know, man. He like, uncanceled. Oh. He uncanceled everyone on Twitter. But then he just canceled Kanye because he Elon. Had, no, because, because Kanye shared a picture him and Elon got in beef on Twitter. This legit just happened. But don't you think everybody that's watching this podcast has also seen the same exact thing you're about to say? I know, but you haven't. Yes, I have. What is it? Why, why would you think that I wouldn't see that? Because you don't really watch social media that much. No, you just think I, because I don't use TikTok, I don't know anything. Well, what happened? And you're calling victim to the TikTok. What you think happened? that if you don't have TikTok, you don't know anything. What happened? You forget that I use Reddit. Reddit right. shows everything. Well, dude. then what do Reddit say? It was just the fact that Kanye West showed, uh, shared a picture of mm-hmm. like uh, Elon shirtless. Yeah. Because I'm not a boomer, Zach. Cool. I actually have sources. And if you want to talk about it, we can. But then, but then Elon hopped on <laughs> to his Twitter and canceled him. The exact thing that he bought Twitter and to not ev- do. And then everything that you and I want to talk about now is going to be speculation on why these two billionaires will now. Well, no, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's like canceling for this reason because he's just such on the hot topic. Elon, Kanye, Trump, whoever you want. Like we, we obviously can be like, there are these crazy, very powerful, big voice people that are all kind of like always in the news and like, they're like distracting as hell. The reality is, is that Kanye is a fucking hater now, man. And I can't listen to his music anymore. And it sucks because it sucks. I, I, I have, he's coming up on every playlist it's like so yeah. much of my music is Kanye. It always yeah. has been. And I just am so bummed because I'm emotionally hurt by him hating on a huge part of our family history. Yeah. Um, because we are Jewish. We're Italian. Part Jewish. We're pretty strongly part Jewish. We just learned that we are a lot more Jewish than we ever thought we were. Really? Because our great grandfather hid the Jewish history from the family. Oh, for that thing. Are you serious? You didn't know this? I live under a rock, dude. Why are all younger siblings living under rocks in the family? If you're a younger sibling, come out of that rock and figure out about your history. Because I'm a middle sibling and I didn't figure out about my family history until my older sibling told me and that pissed me off. Now, here I am sharing it with my younger sibling. Don't be like me. Don't be like her and don't be like him. Let's move on. You said it well enough. I don't even know how to respond, dude. Well played. What's our time? Our time is let's start this game. We're going to end the podcast now on the games. We recognize that some of the games that we play can be somewhat dry and long and daunting. So we want to get all the things out that we want to say on the podcast and we want you to hear them. If you want to continue watching, da 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 Game Cam. That's good. Today we're playing foosball. Yes, this is a game that we got my son, and it is so fun. Uh, point of the game um, is to each player we play at the same time, and you have to use the string to shoot each puck through the hole here. As you can see, you come like you pull back. Pull yeah, Nate, back. Nate's doing real good. Oh, there you go. So I'm just like using it as an example. 
But we go at the same time, and uh, the first whoever can get their pucks through the other side, all of the pucks on the other side wins. Yep. And you're going the same time, so you hit each other's. It gets really intense. This thing might slide. So it we, will slide. So you get to have one hand holding so it. We, we both agree that we have to have our one hand, non good hand. Well, you're my you texture. Yeah. Let me get more comfortable. Get more comfortable, please. And uh, if you're uh, curious about the song that you're hearing, uh, we're not sharing too much about the songs, but it is some of my older music and newer music, just fun lo fi. And I think we're going to be putting out an album someday, Those Boys Game Tracks Volume 1. So. So keep an eye out. Hope you dig the beats. Let us know oh, if you do. Oh, also, uh, December 30th, my new song comes out. Oh, it's so soon. S-Y-N-Z. Look it up on... Signs, baby. Spotify, Apple Music, and everywhere that you listen to your musics. You will find my new song coming out December 30th called Keep Coming Back. Okay, so can we move this a little bit like... Yep. wherever you're comfortable. Because like, the mic isn't going to be on me perfect. You're fine. Okay, let's get started here on Foosball. Um, you're going down. Are you okay? All right, so get, get get everything in the corners. Wait, so we can, we can't them. see if it's recording, but if you were... It's oh, okay. Can, you don't uh, have to double check it. It's okay. I, I'm all about double checking, baby. Can we make sure that we both have the same amount? Yeah, you're recording. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four. That's the weirdest one. Okay, it's <laughs> ten. I have ten. You have four. You have... Yeah, you have ten. Okay. That's the weirdest way. Okay. <sighs> Thanks for watching uh, episode 17. Let's get started here. This is Foosball. And uh, you're going down. Three, Ready? two, one, go. No, 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 dude. No. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. No. Yes. Get out, get out, get out. No, dude, no. No, it's so intense. Oh, shoot. There's so many pucks. Why you can't hit mine? You used mine. You were using mine there. Well, I have to get yours no. back on your side. No, you can't hit mine back. I have to get back on your side. Wait, hold though. on. Pause. I thought that, like, I thought you couldn't hit yours, the other person's back. No. Oh, wait, what? So you just so you, you're just hitting all of them? Why are they different the colors? The whole idea then? is the whole idea is to get your side with no pucks, right? Yeah, I know, but why are they different colors then? I don't know. It's different sides, baby. So it doesn't even matter. It's just about getting no oh, pucks on your okay, side. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, everybody, if you're you're watching. Because you've made some, I have to get your points back over. Wow, can we start over then? Okay. Let's start over because I was not touching yours and I didn't realize that you're uh, getting mine back. Okay. So it doesn't the colors don't matter then. No. Wow. I mean, may maybe they do. That's not how we're playing right now. Like At least I've never the played way, that way. The way we've always played is just that way. Okay, you sorry. You just gotta get all the pucks over. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, you ready? You're going down. You're going down. Three, two, one, go. Gosh. Terrible aim. No. No, no, dude. Yes! No. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. I would have won the last game. It's coming game. out, people. Look at this. Nope, nope. Oh! Oh, pause, pause, pause. pause. Okay, yeah, we're back. Nope, we're shoot. Nope, we see. That was it. You got the lead. That's it. Nope, nope. Yep, that's it. That's it. Here we go. Through the pocket, into the pocket, into the pocket, into the pocket. Let's go. Through. Here we go. <laughs> we're going to take the win. Take the lead. Ugh. God. Damn, it's stressful, dude. <laughs> it's really hard to get this comeback. I need this comeback. I'm a little behind. Yes! <laughs> yes! Come on! That's it, baby! You saw it here! This is it, though, no, man! We just took it down! That's how you do it! Nay Nay from the Bay! Follow me on all my channels! I'm. <laughs> just losing it. Man, that's so hard when they start to pile up like that. I know. It's like, I can't get them out! <laughs> oh, that was cool. That's it! You did it! You hit me from the pit! That was great. Oh, yes. Megan's gonna be so happy I won. <laughs> She's like, you have to stop losing on the cast. You're making me look bad. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy she's in your life now. To All right. push you. Um, I love you, man. Love you. Yeah, but let's do those next time. Um, which ones? 
uh, the uh, Gen oh, Z. Oh, the Gen Z slangs. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, we're like, a, we're at now. Yeah, now we're in five. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, remember, next week, very special. Uh, we have our very first interview, and we're just going to leave it at that. Yep. We are very excited, and we're just going to go for it. Um, and we hope you join us for it. So we'll see you next week. See you next week. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. <laughs>